Friday evening, Rockies coming off an emphatic 11-3 victory over the Giants yesterday in the first of this four-game set. The Giants have now lost six consecutive games. Welcome upstairs with my partner, George Frazier. I'm Drew Goodman. Glad, as always, that you are along with us. How about that Carlos Gonzalez? We've been saying that a lot all summer long. There's nobody been hotter in baseball since about June 1st. He had four home runs and five swings of the bat. The other time, he had a double. Amazing Crazy. what we've been watching, isn't it? I haven't seen a guy this hot, and then I got it in my playing career as a broadcaster. I got to go back to when I was still playing in college and think of Reggie Jackson's three home runs in a World Series. This has been un unbelievable for me to watch and what he's been able to do. Slider down and away, all against Hessler with the, uh, with the Arizona Diamondbacks. That one ricochets up into the second deck. Then he comes up again. Gets another one to right field. I thought this one was even going to go deeper than it went, but a fly to the ball, the sound of the baseball. Last night, sinker down and away at 93 miles an hour. Now just take it up the tunnel for a little while. Comes back up again. Hits a frozen, I mean a frozen laser to right field. Too hot to even be caught in the bleachers. You know, it's happened only one other time that a guy's hit four home runs in five at bats with the Rockies. Oh, let me think. Who that was that? Cargo, 2000. <laughs> at 12. Well, Brandon Barnes has gotten to watch his good friend swing the bat quite a bit over the last uh, couple of years, and he just shakes his head sometimes. He's the pony. I mean, you watch him take BP, and, and you watch what he does with the bat, and you see it. You see it every single day, and, you know, it's good to see that he's he's been injury-free this year, and uh, he's being able to to do the things that he does. You know, you, Spill, you played with him. You saw those crazy hot streaks he goes on. And, uh, you know, last year I didn't really get to see that. And, and seeing it this year, it's, it's mind-blowing. Well, it just makes you uh, anxiously anticipate his first at bat of the evening tonight. Let's go out to center field. Talk to Ryan Spielborg. Spilly, you played a little bit with uh, this guy. He's a special talent, a truly unique player. He really is. I mean, you're talking about five-tool athletes. Yes, he's not stealing as many bases, but I would rather see him hit. And you know what was interesting? The other day I was sitting there talking with Cargo and Nolan Arenado, and Nolan talked about how the thing he saw with Cargo had to deal with his hands how he was relaxing so when you start to see well look over here this is july 7th this is when he was kind of angry cargo so his hands were just moving a little too aggressively at times when you're like that it's there's a lot going on you're a lot of emotions a lot of thought process you're not as relaxed now you can look back to september the second the grand slam gets his hands set there's one tap sets the bat resets his hands nice and calm hits the grand slam so there are little things that guys notice that's what makes nolan a great teammate he picked that up something that simple hey relax let your hands just work that has been working for cargo it'll be interesting to watch it it'll be fun to watch it tonight i will be out here on the set doing fan friday we're going to be talking about jobs that players had when they were in the minor league so it should be fun back to you Jobs players had in the minor leagues. That will be interesting. Cargo's in Fuego, 11 ribbies the last two days. Blackman's been pretty good. Oh, Nolan's got a home run in four straight as well. Rockies, Giants, come on back to Coors Field with us.
So tonight from Coors Field, the Rockies continue on against the San Francisco Giants. 11-3 last night behind a season-high 19 hits for the Rockies. And the day before, they had 18 hits, so 37 hits for the Rockies the last couple of ball games. That's Angel Pagan, and the switch hitter will lead things off for the Giants. Let's take a look at the rest of Bruce Bochy's lineup presented tonight by Southwest Airlines. Book your lottery now at Southwest. Dot com. Matt Duffy's going to move up to the two spot. Brandon Belt back in there posing Marlon Burke. Brandon Crawford returns. He's missed the last three ball games after being hit Monday by Chris Hatcher with a 95 mile an hour fastball on the left calf. Kelby Tomlinson will bat seven. Juan Perez in left field batting eighth. And then Chris Heston pitching and batting ninth. Jorge De La Rosa has the baseball looking for his ninth victory. 31 games over 500 in his career at Coors Field and the all-time wins leader in Rockies history misses ball one. Nine and six against the San Francisco Giants in his career. Pretty good numbers uh, as far as that concerned. This year only one start. He left with the game tied 2-2. Five innings, four hits, a couple of runs. He struck out seven, walked two. You see the splits. Lefties at 259, righties 243. Two and one. Pagats hit 362 against the Rockies this year. But right now, they're not hitting much of anything. Over their last 17 games, they're averaging a little more than two runs a game. They've hit only seven home runs, and two of those have come from Ryan Vogelsong and Madison Bumgarner. Last night, Vogelsong at 38 plus hit the first home run of his career. So overall, the Rocky or the, the uh, Giants have lost six straight, averaging just 2.3 runs, 2.27 batting average, and that normally very sound pitching staff has been hit hard of late. That's how you lose six in a row. Three one-run games in L.A. They didn't lose ground last night because the Dodgers played a seesaw battle with the Padres. Padres led, fell behind, ultimately won 10 to seven. So it's still a six and a half game deficit for San Francisco. 2 2. And that's a little punch that's going to be caught by Justin Morno. That's right, Justin Morno playing again. So let's uh, show you the roster moves that the Rockies made earlier today to activate number 33. Ball will always find you, right? He's got a little grin on his face. Justin Morno is activated off the 60 day disabled list with a concussion and neck issues. Rafael Enoa, by the way, was also recalled, and the Rockies needed a spot on the 40-man roster, so Matt McBride had to be designated for assignment. But it's good to see Morneau back out there. George, it's been since May 14th. Amazing. May 14th, he had 100 at-bats exactly with three home runs and nine RBIs when he went on the disabled list. Yeah, we're excited, too. Think about it for Justin. All sorts of anticipation coming into this season. He was defending National League batting champion. Had resurrected his career. Former American League MVP back in 2006. Hitting 290 when he went on the disabled list. Yeah. Here's the 1 0 on Matt Duffy. That ball's inside 2 0. Duffy in large part is hit number three in the order for the Giants sliding up to the two spot tonight. Brandon belts in that three hole. It's in there. Let's take a look at the arsenal of Jorge De La Rosa and you know you're going to see that splitter a lot. You're going to see the splitter even more than you are the fastball. It'll react a lot like a slider so it can be confusing. To scouts in the stands, he will show the cutter occasionally. There's the fastball thrown, soft fly ball hit out to Carlos Gonzalez for out number two. And he got Duffy out on the front side. Here the Rockies defensively tonight. Ben Paulson's getting an opportunity to play left field again. They're keeping his bat in the lineup with uh, Morneau at first base. Charlie and Cargo out there as well. Nolan Arenado, Jose Reyes, DJ LeMayhew, as you'd expect. And Morneau at first base. Nick Hundley doing the catching. Two gone. That'll bring up Brandon Belt. Brandon did not play last night against the 
lefty Chris Russin. What a job by Chris. Complete game performance again for Russin. Second time in two weeks. That becomes the first pitcher to throw two complete games at Coors Field in a season since Ubaldo in 2011. Bochy's just looking for offense. Typically, Belt left on left is not in a lot of those lineups as you look at Chris Russell and dug out of the Rockies with Chad Pettis. Jolie Chassin that year also had two complete games in 2011. He and Ubaldo. Belt two for eight against uh, Jorge De La Rosa looking for offense. 0 2 on Belt. The last time that's two complete games period in a season. The last time two complete games at Coors Field as Russin's done was 08 when Aaron Cook turned the trick. He did one of them with what 71 games 71 pitches wasn't it or 74 that it one was game? A, it was a really low number. You know we're going up to Seattle. Next week and. Yeah, strike three on the inside corner. Good start for De La Rosa. Yeah, I remember that game Bob threw in like 20 minutes up in Seattle number years ago. Rockies getting ready to go against Chris Heston. Charlie Blackman naturally will be first. And here's the Southwest batting order for Walt Weiss. Jose Reyes will bat second. Jose's really coming on offensively. And then it'll be Cargo. He'll be in that three spot, the average at 276. Nolan Arenado, a home run in four consecutive games. Then the return of Justin Morneau, he'll be in the five spot. DJ will bat six. Ben Paulson, seven. Nick Hundley, eight, the 304. What a bonus having your uh, eighth place hitter hitting over 300. Jorge will bat ninth naturally. And here's Chris Heston. It's been mostly good stuff for Chris Heston. Some outstanding stuff in his rookie campaign. 11 victories highlighted by that no no over the Mets. 11 and 8 overall record. 6 and 2 out on the road, which is uh, uh, obviously a very good number, but 5 and 6 at home. That's a little unusual in a pitcher's ballpark. 0 and 3 in his last five starts and earned an average near six. He was demoted to the minor leagues. A week ago to go there, kind of take a breather, just take a step back for him, and then he's back here starting again with Lenskin surgery. They needed to plug back in again. First 20 games, 11 and 5 with a three earned run average. One of the reasons he got demoted, an ERA of 571 in the month of August. This ball is pulled toward the hole, sliding stop, and the out is recorded. Well done by Kelby Tomlinson. Tomlinson takes a hit away from Charlie Blackman. Well, here he is against the Mets earlier this year. And George, he wasn't that far from throwing a perfect game. The game was at City Field. He struck out 11, didn't walk a batter. You say, oh, was there an error behind him? 
no errors behind him. He hit three guys. He hit three guys in the ball game, but a no hitter for the youngster. His command is typically very good. The fastball is going to range 89 to 92 miles an hour. He's going to sink it. He's going to cut it. He's got good, good secondary stuff. He knows how to pitch. And if you look back at his minor league history, he started out in uh, Arizona in the summer league after graduating from East Carolina University, and he went one and five. The next year at Augusta, which is in the Sally League, he went five and eleven, five and thirteen, excuse me. San Jose, twelve and four. He sent him to Double A, went nine and eight, but his earned run average of two point two four was the second lowest in the history of the Sally League. Sir Camp, two point oh two earned run average. Fresno in 2014, he was 12 and 9. He got the opportunity to come to the big leagues, and he's made the most of it this year with the injuries to their rotation. Yeah, a couple other notes to add to what George is saying. This was a 12th round pick out of East Carolina. Glad to see a guy make it like that. Just like your short, just like your second baseman, Tomlinson. Yep. Yeah. And he's now he's not a, he's you know, he's, he's a rookie, but he's not a puppy. He's 27 years of age. Turned 27 the right. first week of the season. Well, he's climbed every step of the ladder. He's repeated AAA twice. This was the third year there at AAA. He's had the opportunities and he's taken advantage of the biggest one that's been handed to him over these uh, 22 plus starts at the big league level. Two and two on Jose Reyes and another chance for Tomlinson. He'll go on the backhand side, two outs. So here comes Cargo. Last night he got it going in a hurry against Vogelsong, who he was one for 17 against until that swing, and he goes opposite field, two-run shot. And then the next time up, he said, "You know what? I can pull the ball still," and he hit that one for a home run. Actually, that was two at bats later because he had the double to left also, four home runs and five at bats. Inside. He has faced Heston now six times, one for six. He owns a double against him. Guys like Heston sometimes can be difficult to pick the ball up because it's a high leg kick, but it's a short, quick arm action off the back hip. So you don't get to really identify the ball very long. Hides it really well along his body line. I thought maybe they might do the high school thing and not even throw it, just hold up four and say go first. <laughs> right. Well, it's right now, ostensibly, it's the same thing because they right. have not come close to throwing a strike. And then when Arenado comes up, you hold up four and send him two, and I'll take my chances down the line. Jim Joyce will let you know, me know, and the greater Rocky Mountain area know when it's a strike. And I love that. But how do you? Uh oh, uh, they threw Benham a strike, and if it's fair, it is gone. It is a foul ball. Kerwin Danley got down on one knee, studied it the whole way. Now that is reviewable. I don't know if it was without question. If it was so high, George, I have no idea. Well, I don't, you know, the thing is, it was very high, but I thought it really faded the last 30, 40 feet as it got there. You see Cargo kind of leaning. Is it going to make it? Going to make it. EY's leaning. Kerwin Daniels, Daniels leaning. See, Cargo's like, okay. Well, you know, Walt's coming out. Walt's coming out. They may take a look at this. Yep, they are. They are going to take a look at it. Did it we got to go back because that it's so I mean it's so high. You almost wish like some fans down there saw yelling yeah, it touched you fair. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Help you out. Is that allowed. Yeah well they can do whatever they want to they bought a ticket right. That's absolutely correct. They can set their give it to give it to this action within reason. Yeah. Time for a Subaru review. Whether you're on the road or at the game, everybody could use a second set of eyes. I wonder how disconcerting this is now. You know, obviously where it lands is foul, but it's where it crossed over the foul pole. I'm, I'm trying to find the baseball up there. Now, keep in mind, in New York, 
they'll be able to really push. We have a ton of cameras here. It just it's one of those ones that's very, very difficult to tell. And he said foul. You can see Jip Joyce said it's foul according to said like by a foot and a half, two feet. So I wonder how disconcerting it is, George, because Cargo's been standing there. I know Heston has also for a couple of minutes, waiting till they figure it out. So now it's three and two. Well, if you're Heston, you're going, I don't want to throw that one again. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking about right now. Bochi and Rigetti are telling them the same thing. This one's fair, and this one's got. Okay. Nowhere near the foul pole. That'll work. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, is this the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen? Oh, is this fun to watch? 36 now for Cargo with 85. Look, look at Boach's face. Really? That's the next pitch. Unbelievable. It is remarkable. And, and, and they were trying to bring the ball on the inner half with a fastball that they threw inside. He's just so quick right now and seeing the ball so well. Look where they set up. And that ball hung to the outside corner. Slider at 78 miles an hour. I'm not so sure it was a strike. And George, as we always say about cargo, he doesn't hit wall scrapers. This yeah. ball's well hit. Arenado's got back to back. Whatever you can do, I can do. <laughs> oh, it's such a fun tandem to watch right now. This is something yeah. special. Dance about it, you bet. They ought to both take a bow. Give him a curtain call. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you remember oh, Spilly sit down 48 hours ago? And they're, and they're both tied. They're kidding each other. Hey, whoever wins it, great. They had a great time visiting with Spilly in the clubhouse. Cargo since then's hit like five homers, and, and Nolan's hit three. It's been amazing. Fastball wanted it out or half, put it in or half, and it's a laser to left off the bat of Nolan Arenado to left field. And that's a home run now in five straight games. We didn't mean to overshadow Justin Morneau's return. Look at this. That is his reaction in cargo right behind him. Don't sit down, folks, when no stir are there. If you're in the dugout, make There's sure you There's a base hit in his return for Morneau. Good for Justin. Oh, he loved it. The guy said, hey, it's a batting title. This guy's not the first time he'd won it either. And yeah, not his first rodeo, huh? Yeah, then think about it. Just look up how many hits and awards he's got. Cargo and Nolan have combined in 71 home runs. They've now moved in front in baseball of Albert Pujols and Mike Trout ahead of Josh Donaldson and Jose Batista with Toronto. Chris Davis, who's had an extraordinary second half as well, he along with Manny Machado have combined to hit 64. DJ is six for nine lifetime against Chris Heston. Here's the permagrant. I'd be smiling ear to ear also. What made it even wilder is he, he hits one five miles and they have to go and watch it on in New York to determine whether it was fair or foul. That takes, you know, three, four minutes by the time the process is done. The very next pitch he hits 450 feet. A slider that was away at 78 and about knee high. You, know, you were kidding earlier, Fresh, sort of, about the old high school thing. Right. Next time he comes up, if there's any, if they, even with a man on first, Boach may say put him on. Yeah, he may. I mean, this is a, you're looking at Bonds type stuff right now. When they used to walk Barry. I remember it was uh, Buck Showalter walked Barry with the bases loaded that's one right. time in San Francisco. I'm not saying that's what Boach is going to do, but put Buck it this Showalter way: I, I guarantee you. He will think about it. I'm not saying with the base is loaded, but he will think about even if there's a man on first, if there's traffic out there, passing on him. 
Yeah, but you're passing to more danger, too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, I know. The other guys hit five, five straight. Home run in five straight. Yeah, so what do you do? You would pick your poison. And that ties the Rockies record. Larry Walker did it in 99. Dante Bichette in 95. And now Nolan in five straight. Three two. And swung on and missed. That'll end the inning. Put the Rockies off to another fabulous start. Cargo again. Nolan again. When they gathered back in February, people who are Rockies fans or just baseball fans in general will never forget what they've witnessed the last few days by those two players. And with that, we go to a guy that just recently retired and knows all about hitting the baseball well, Ryan Spielborgs. This is freaky stuff. I have never done stuff like that, and that is why I had to have a job in the offseason. That's why Nolan and Cargo's job is just hitting baseball. Tonight we're doing Fan Friday, so send us your tweets at hashtag Fan Friday at Root Sports underscore Rocky Mountain or RM. Uh, one great job was John Axford, and uh, he came after he got released playing baseball. I was a cell phone salesman uh, for the winter, so I needed some money at some point in the offseason, and then TELUS um, was hiring back home. It's a, a Canadian uh, company. And I, I worked uh, kind of the Christmas time for them, selling cell phones in Walmarts and Best Buy. Um, that was my off-season job then. And then the, the year following that, um, I did some of it in college too, but I was a, a server and a bartender. So uh, serving and bartending actually uh, pays a lot better than minor league baseball. So. That was a fly ball to DJ LeMayhew, but John Axford having bounced back from getting released to having an off-season job in it, it's always interesting when you hear guys like John Axford that have now succeeded in the major leagues to hear what they're doing while they're working, while they're trying to get that off-season conditioning. How are they making money when baseball players are only paid for the time that they're playing? George, what did you do when you weren't playing during the off-season getting ready for your season? Work construction for my dad. They didn't show me any favors. $2.25 an hour. Never forget it. Climate telephone poles. Marlon Bird swings and misses. My favorite because when you used to get baseball cards growing up, George, you had the offseason occupation a lot of times. Tops would list it in the upper right hand corner. And my all time favorite was Richie Hebner, who had a heck of a big league career. I think Richie played forever, probably played, played 20 years. twice. He, he was a grave digger with his dad in the offseason. And guess what? They did it with a pick and a shovel, they didn't do it with a front end loader. 
Hey. And I believe and it was in the Boston area. Massachusetts. And in the yeah. off season, the ground gets a little frozen. frozen. Yeah. He used to tell me they'd go out and they'd pour gas on it to loosen it up and let it get soft to dig, and they'd pour more gas and light it and dig it out. Oh, Richie Hefner. Here's the 0-2, and this is rolled foul by Marlon Bird. You do all kinds of odd jobs. I worked in a sporting goods store one year. Went to winter ball a couple of years to make money. I think I threw a 97 game for one year. Just kind of went to winter ball. Yeah. I had to, I had to make money. Oh, well, Parker Frazier, your son yeah. did that last year. Went yeah, down to make, Dominican. Make a great fun. They won the Dominican. Went on to the Caribbean World Series. Great experience for everybody. But the minor leagues have changed. I mean, Drew, when I was at AAA, I made $1,200 a month for five months. You get to triple A now or double A, you got a little bit of experience. You're going to make six to ten thousand dollars a month. Even guys that have been to the big league level make make twelve to eighteen thousand. Some teams pay them twenty thousand to go to triple A. Well, it's hundred thousand dollars a year. Thirty years old, I'll go down there for a hundred grand and play for a little while. Where else? I don't want to go work for a living. And not every fan realizes that there are a number of players that will not get a call up to the big leagues they become organizational guys that are that are high quality players but they're no longer prospects they're no longer going to be included in September call ups but they keep playing they 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 fill a need and they help mentor young guys when they come well, up as well that kid has been who just hit for his 400 whatever well, he's run. 38 years old and he's got some time in the big he's got 37 home runs in the big leagues and he's sticking around he wants to coach your man Doug Benier that was in the Rockies organization had played for seven or eight years. I think now he's on his 14th year, 15th year of baseball, and he's got a year and a half, two years in the big leagues. He was in the big leagues this year with the Twins again. Last year with the Yankees. Because they know it's a guy they can bring up, just not going to freeze on a ground ball. You know, if I need him to play five, six games over a month period, go play. And they make $85,000 in a month playing at the big league level. They, I mean, there's no reason. If you're still physically able, and I've advised my son, I advise this to other guys. You're still physically able and you like to play the game, then keep playing. Go have some fun. The big thing now, a lot of guys are going over to Korea. Korea and Japan are paying a lot of money. So a lot of guys are going over there now as they get to the end of their back into their twenties, early thirties. Two and one on Brandon Crawford. Nineteen home runs, seventy five RBIs, career best for Crawford. Drew, do you remember the very first check you got in broadcasting, how much you got paid? I can tell you exactly how much it was. It was three two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. It was three hundred ninety-three dollars. I can't tell you what the change was, but it was three hundred ninety-three dollars. Yeah, I got two hundred sixteen dollars and eighty-four cents my first paycheck in baseball for two weeks of work in rookie ball. Two-two. Swung on and missed, and that's the second strike after De La Rosa. Six up, six set down, two to nothing on the home runs by Gonzalez and Arenado.
Talk to Charlie Blackman, and Charlie Blackman had an internship with the financial company when he was a minor leaguer playing baseball, and it hit him hard. So the thing is, is you get there early. I only went like one day a week, but it was like almost all day. And like, you get there at like nine, okay? This is early. And then you feel like you've been there like in an, you know, an eternity, and it's like 11 o'clock. And you still have like an hour before you can justify like eating lunch, and you're already like falling asleep. So it's, it's tough. Uh, made me really want to play hard and make it to the big leagues so that I wouldn't have to get a real job. Most guys in baseball weren't meant for real life, and that is why they play baseball for a living. And watching Charlie Blackman talking about it, more reason why he worked so hard. Spilly, he, he just insulted a lot of people because all those hardworking folks out there, he goes, we had to get there really, really, <laughs> really early, like nine. I know. He was huh? tongue-in-cheek tongue the whole time. But, oh, come on, Ben Paulson. Finally, he gets a hit. That a baby, Ben. Rockies with four knocks already against Chris Heston. Leadoff single for Paulson. Nick Huntley coming up. Most fun I ever had building swimming pools. You did that with Shirley, didn't you? Yeah, Bob Shirley was in the big leagues. Larry Freeze played college basketball. He was six foot nine, 250 pounds. He carried and, and, all yeah, the heavy all, stuff. Yeah, man, man, Bob jumped in with him. We started doing that. That's 1988, man. I, we had a blast. We'd start at 5 o'clock in the morning, be home at 10. Get yeah. hot. We're saying we're done. See ya. We we go home. Larry pack it up. We go home. We had a great time. That's hard work. Yeah, but you know what? It's not hard work. It's just to work out. Here's Nick, and Huntley bounces this to short. He's going to have to hustle. And they turned over. Six four three. Well, when Heston's on, that's what he can do. He gets ground balls. He pitches. You know, that's the thing about it. Right now, two of the hottest guys in the game of baseball got after him, and uh, Gonzalez and Arenado, more no batting champion, comes up with a base hit. But he's a guy that's going to put the ball on the ground. He had 11 strikeouts in that no hitter. That that's an aberration. He doesn't do that. But he is a guy that uh, he is a guy that will put it on the ground. The infield loves it when he's on the hill. Here's a strikeout, De La Rosa. It's Fan Friday on Root Sports. Send us your thoughts on the All Star Game. Your favorite. Now this isn't right. The All Star Game. We had an old read here, so I'm not going to read that anymore. Obviously, we're talking about jobs tonight. So <laughs> send us via Twitter, your or Facebook, your first job or one of your first jobs. Try to find as many unique ones as possible to share with you. Two and two. Oh, this could be a oh, problem. Pull nothing. Duffy still made the play. Nicely done. And that's exactly right. Do not pull anything from De La Rosa. Rockies leading 2-0. We're off to the third.
Tao. Carlos Gonzalez again, Nolan Arenado again. A couple of solo home runs back to back in the first frame. Drew Goodman, George Frazier, Ryan Spielborgs tonight. And we've kicked Frazier to the curb again, and I think you'll be pleased as to why. Stephanie Kendrick uh, joins us. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Kyle Kendrick's uh, better half, clearly. <laughs> you doing well? You adjusted to Colorado? Yeah, it's beautiful out here. Yeah. It's really beautiful. We love it. Yeah, yeah. the family likes it? Yeah. Everybody's good? Yeah, the kids, good. they've been healthy. It's been great. Yeah. yeah. Now you, you, get, get, you live in Florida in the offseason, correct? We do. We do. And we're going home next week, so we're really excited about that, too. Yeah. Now, you shared with me that you're actually in Dunedin. Yeah. And Dunedin's Blue Jays territory. Yeah, isn't that funny? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kyle's I would think Clearwater, the, maybe. So it's near there. But Kyle's with the Phillies his whole career yeah. up until now, so it was perfect for spring, spring training. But right. we love it. We're, you know. Well, you get there the right time of year. It cools right. off a little right. bit. Summer would be really hot. So. Yeah. Now, you have a whole pile of stuff here. We'll get. We'll keep talking about yeah. the game as well. Kelby Tomlinson is going to lead it off against Jorge in the third. Um, but what you guys have cooking? Okay, so we have our Rockies Wives online um, charity, Favorite Things. It's our husband's favorite things, baskets. The proceeds go to the Parkinson's Association of the Rockies. Um, it's our last charity event of the season. And it started on the 3rd. It ends um, Saturday night at midnight. And it's just for a really great cause. It's for the Parkinson's, you know, disease. And it's it was fun putting these together because it's our husband's favorite things. And there's also some really cool autographed memorabilia. And then, I mean, there's 18 baskets. We've got cargo. We've got Marno. We've got, I, you know. You know what, Stephanie, I love this idea. If you don't mind, I'm going to pick a few, few sure. items because Kyle's been kind enough and and I know a thing or two about gloves. And this is a, a Rawlings Pro Preferred. So if you went to buy this glove, I and mean, it's going to run you about $500. Um, I had to beg is, him for that. Did you? He's like, my glove? Like, give me the glove. You're a pitcher. <laughs> you had to steal it from him? Took it. Yeah. So listen, you, you can use any glove. You're a pitcher, right? <laughs> right. So Kyle, I mean, it, this one was made for Kyle, clearly. Kyle has gone ahead and autographed it as well mm -hmm. after Stephanie threatened him. Right. And uh, see, I mean, there's stuff like this in here. Yeah. What, what else? What's this Got a bunch. Well, then it's his favorite things, like, you know, Hawaii's our favorite place to vacation. Silver Oak is his favorite red wine. That's a, that's a good, that's a very um, nice bottle of red wine. That's that, a really that, nice that'll, that'll be staying right here with us. Right, there you go. <laughs> then we've got things like Oreos. It's his favorite, you know, Oreos and milk does, every night. Does he dabble before the game in Oreos, or is that the late night snack? It's the late night. Because Kyle, I know, takes great care of himself. He does. He this has is... a very strict before he pitches. He has peanut butter and jelly and certain things. Now, these look like game-used yeah. spikes. Mm -hmm. Are they game-used? Yeah, he's worn them in a game or two. Definitely spring training. I mean, Breitling's his favorite watch. Creed, his favorite cologne. Got a nice candle in there. That's You guys went all out. I mean, it's yeah. not just like four or five items. There's a ton of stuff No, in there. I've got three gift cards. Elway's is like his favorite place to eat here. And right. Whole Foods, he loves the food shop. He's really good at food shop. Is he? Yeah. Can he cook? No. So so he, he, food shops. he, he dumps the pile on the counter he, and says, hon. There you go. He helps me put it away. Well, that's a nice gesture. But the food, <laughs> right. The food shopping is very helpful. Um, but, no, it was fun to do, and, you know, there's really, really awesome items. There's 18 baskets. I mean, almost everybody's contributed, and some okay. really cool things. It's on um, rockies.com forward slash wives. So rockies.com forward, forward slash, slash wives. wives. And, and, again, it starts tomorrow or it started It tonight? started yesterday, okay. and it ends midnight on Saturday. So you just got to watch your bid. That's right. The bids are going up slowly right now. They're, they're actually... People are really bidding on them. Yeah, this is Justin Morno's basket. Yeah, his is really great. He's got an autographed item from um, some country star. Forget. He, he's got some cool stuff in there. I, I guarantee there's something Canadian in there as well, right? Probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. You think this? Yeah. <laughs> That's. It's. You know what? It is. That is such a. Gr I'm really impressed. It's such a great idea because. You get to know the player a little bit more as opposed to you just do. hearing us perhaps talk about That's what's or, fun about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, go. Jason Aldean, actually, I think, is Justin's really good friends with okay. him. Yeah. So he's got in there his hat. And he's got a CD maybe as well. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. Cool. I think so. I, it's, it's all on there. Actually, Kyle, I have his George Strait. It's his favorite singer. Right. So these are his favorite songs, George Strait, kind of CD. Just like, you know, fun stuff. Now, are you a Philly girl? I am from Philadelphia. Okay. So... Yeah. Now we know the born connection, and raised. born yeah. and raised. Yeah. So, were unfortunately, you, you my were never family. yelling at him prior to when you started dating, were you? I mean, because Philly fans can be tough. That, absolutely, and I can say that because I'm from there. 
they can be very tough. They can be but very no, tough. I was never one of the fans that booed or yelled. I have four older brothers. I can't say that for all of them. <laughs> no, they're they're good sports. The, that's neat. So you um, you grew up in Philadelphia. Now, I did. Were your brothers baseball players as well? Um, I mean, not. Were you a fan prior to meeting Kyle? We always had season tickets. I never really was that into it. All right. So what really. do you? Right. So what do you do? We just we Who kinda, are you? Yeah, actually, when I found out what he did, I was like, that's probably not going to work out. <laughs> hey, I just got a, a little bird in my ear told me you were on Survivor. I was. Really? How come you heard that night? Because it's just the magic <laughs> you guys of are television. Tricky. Yes, it's the magic of television. So you were on Survivor. How'd I you was. do? I was on three times. I did. I was runner up. Was the best I ever did. Good I for never you. Won, unfortunately, but yeah, it was fun. My family watches that. Yeah, back in my younger days when I was like really in shape. How, did kids. you did you lose weight? Yeah, I got down. Um, the I got down to 92 pounds. Oh my I goodness! Lost probably almost 40 pounds. Oh my one goodness! season. Oh yeah, it's. I mean, it is very real. Were you, were you married at that point in time? No. No, I met Kyle. We were engaged when I, I went on my third season. I was on three times. So, wow. Yeah. So does anybody ever stop you on the street? Forget Kyle, right? Does anybody ever stop you and say, hey, wait a second, I know you? Sometimes. Yeah, Kyle loves that. I bet he does. <laughs> One, two, swung on and missed. Stephanie, this is awesome. Again, it's the Wives Thank Online you. Charity Baskets, um, and it's raising money for research into Parkinson's, Parkinson's yes. which, is, which has been close to the Rockies organization going back to when Ben Petrick, who played yes. here a number of years ago, was diagnosed. ColoradoRockies.com forward slash why. Stephanie, thanks for coming by. Thank and you. thanks for leaving this for us. Thank you. We really no appreciate problem. that. Okay, big now. <laughs>
a gift basket but I think it, I really do I think that's such an awesome idea. Well, it's a really good idea and, 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 and to have the wives get into, involved into the community see what they want to do here and how they want to do it. So it's all good. And each one is unique. Stephanie on the way out wanted us to mention said oh and Kyle's going to be mad I forgot to show you his Seattle see this is going to please Rock, Broncos fans but his Seattle Seahawks have because he's from the state of Washington so don't right. get angry at him. No. Don't get mad. But he is a big not surprisingly Seattle Seahawks fan. I would not have played so well a year and a half ago. One two on Charlie. On the outside corner, according to Jim Joyce. Second strikeout for Heston. Best summer job, Rockies intern under clubhouse manager Alan Bossert. Rockies are a first class organization, Fan Friday. That's from uh, Danny. Well, he worked for a great guy, too. And A.B. Allen Bossert, the hardest working person I know. Sleeps like 25 minutes a night. <laughs> Jose Reyes swings and misses one and one. Cargo waiting. Who wants tacos when the Rockies score seven or more as they've done the last couple of days go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day between four and six to get your Rockies taco special the boss at Taco Bell. And this is bounced to Bell and feeds Heston for the second out. Well this is kind of how the first inning went a couple of ground outs and then cargo came up. And he hit a ball about a mile high and a mile far and they had to review it because they weren't sure it was initially called foul but Walt Weiss wanted it checked so they went to New York and they reviewed it for about three minutes and it was ruled that it was foul by a foot and a half. The very next pitch was a 3 2 delivery and cargo said well this one's not going to be foul. <laughs> no it went off the back wall of the bullpen. Inside. Well, here's a look at that. Uh, first inning home run by Cargo. Slider. Outside corner. See ya. If he's able to get on, we'll show you another one real quick, too. Well, but it wasn't Cargo. <laughs> able to get on. George, he's just been on temporarily most of the time. He's a drive by. Drive yeah, by first right. base, second base. Talk to everybody. Say hi. Yeah. Hi to the guy at second. Hi, guy at third. And look at Posey and go, didn't I just see you? Two and two. Two and two on cargo. When you're in a zone like this, well, nobody knows what it's like to be in a zone like this, but anything approaching it. Nobody watching anyway doesn't know what it is. Yeah. Like, unless they played for the courts like guys in uh, softball. This is slowly hit. This could be a tough play, and Crawford just did get cargo. It's going to be like the Little League celebration on the Giants side right now. We got him out. We got Johnny out. He hasn't made it out in three years in Little League. A one, two, three inning for Chris Heston. Two nothing, Colorado.
Fargo and Nolan Arenado will go to the fourth. Angel Pagan will be first against Jorge De La Rosa, who has three straight one, two, three innings to start things out tonight on a Friday in Lodo. Pagan hit a little soft liner to Morneau his first time up. Side ball one on Angel. Battled some knee tendonitis this year. We heard Mike Kruko saying yesterday that so this club just beat up, and then you know, Mike said, but it's no different from any other club. When you roll into September, bodies are sore. Everybody's fatigued. It's just part of the game. Yeah. 162 games to 30 in spring trainings, 192. You start training in December if you're a pitcher throwing the baseball. It's just a really long season. They lost two guys out of the rotation, Matt Kane, Tim Lincecum. But they're trying to make up some things here. There's Hunter Pence. They miss him in a big way. Yeah, he's close to coming back. And coach told me today, seven to ten. Hopefully it's a little more or less than that. Panic. Be back. Crawford's back in the lineup tonight. Panic should be back next week. He had a rehab assignment, first game in a rehab assignment yesterday. Had a couple of bats, played three innings. He's going to play tonight again. He'll play Saturday. He's going to have an off day Sunday, and then he'll be in Arizona if all goes well on Monday when this trip continues for the Giants. There's a base hit, first of the game for San Francisco. So Pagan will lead off single in the fourth. And that'll bring up Matt Duffy. Yeah, I mentioned the start of this telecast. Uh, Del Rosa has handled the Giants. He's nine and six in his career versus the Giants. This is his second start this year versus the Giants. He went five innings, gave up two runs. He left that ball game. It was tied two two. Forty seven and sixteen at Coors Field. Who said you can't pitch here? De La Rosa. Matt Duffy. That's low. With every challenge call, the Subaru Eyesight Review will determine the outcome. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Duffy's hit 349 against the Rockies this year. And a line shot could be two. Double play. Out at first base. Yeah, they want to check it, but I don't think he's going to win it. Bruce Bochy will wait for Sean Dunstan, who does the review on the monitors back at the back up in the clubhouse. You'll know, get a pretty good look at it here on the Subaru Super Bowl. This should be ideal. You know what? Man, I, you know, the hand's still in the air to me. Now, the good thing is, he was called out on the field by Kerwin Danley. Uh huh. And Boach wants him to take a look at it. Maybe one of those deals where it would be hard to flip it either way, which, which again, bodes well for the Rockies. So for now, Angel Pagan will hang out with Billy Hayes, the first base coach. Time for a Subaru review, whether you're on the road or at the game. Everybody could use a second set of eyes. It looks like the hand's still moving toward the back. I, I think Kerwin Danley got it right. Yeah, he was right on top of it. Had the perfect angle to make the call. That's, there's no way that's changing. I shouldn't say that. We said that they, last night too. I know, I, you know, <laughs> start eating words. You're going back to, uh, well, they're done pretty quickly, and he's out. Two gone. That'll bring up Brandon Bell.
Yeah, he, he might have hurt his shoulder too. He's over there working that over pretty good. Still doing it. Right back there in the back. Bell struck out looking his first time. It's right back there in the back of it, uh, in the muscle side of it. He's rolling that around. He's been throwing, trying to throw a throwing motion with the helmet in his hand. Two uh, strike count on Brandon Bell. He's hitting 387 against lefties. Of late, he started the season. Six for 48, but now he's 24 for his last 62 at the plate against Southpaws. Product of the University of Texas. De La Rosa with the 0 2 to the Longhorn. I'll tell you what, he went rapid fire through their minor league system. Could hit. Started the year at uh, High A in Stockton, then made the transition to Double A and to the Big Leagues. It was quick. Buster Posey waiting his turn. There are two outs, nobody on. Shift is on. Here's the one two from Jorge. Splitter in the dirt, two and two. Phelps third on the club at home runs with 17. Bird actually has the most home runs. Though a lot of that was done in Philadelphia. Where was Cincinnati? Where was Marlon earlier? Cincinnati, Cincinnati to start the year. He started, uh, he was in Philadelphia the previous year. Well, he's, this is his fifth team in the last three years. Well, you got to look at the book. It's tricky. He's fine. He'll be back in the ball game. Two two, and that is back up the middle, and it comes to Reyes, and he'll get dealt by a step and a half. There was a base hit the first for the Giants, but then a double play erased that. Two nothing, Colorado. John Campbell, Colorado Springs, Denver folks can appreciate this. First job, Skate City. I just visited the Little lo Littleton location. It's still awesome. I can just picture you spraying down the shoes, the roller skates. 
And it's something that I want to lead to with Nolan Arenado coming to the plate. Notice his back foot, how it's starting to walk backwards. He's really starting to create some back leverage. So look right here. This is his back foot. This is almost softball style to get that back leg engaged. And that's the home run. He's been doing that a lot more the last couple days. And that's a rocket to center field, a base hit for Nolan. Two for two tonight. Well, let's take another look at it. Watch this right leg uh, as the pitch starts to approach. It's just a little slight step to the backside, which gets the weight transferred in a position that you need it to be in to make sure, you know, it's like Spilly said, softball style swing. Justin Morneau in his return to the lineup after being gone since mid May. Had a base hit his first time up up the middle. This one is in the air to left, and Juan Perez will make the catch. Yeah, the key to me on hitting on anything is if you can keep your heads and hands still, you got a chance to hit the baseball. The minute the head starts moving, hands start moving, you're going to have a tough time. One out, LeMayhew, who struck out in the first, will come up. DJ, six for 10 in his matchups with Chris Heston. Career 326 hitter as well against the Giants. Take a look at this spray chart, the nine quadrants of it for DJ LeMayhew. Now, red means he is hitting above the major league average. In those areas. Well, he doesn't have a cold zone. <laughs> That's why he's fourth in the league in hitting, right? It's the only one I've seen like this this season that there's no blue squares. Yeah, there's no 180s. That is how you hit over 300. You got to be able to handle pitches in all different areas of the zone, and DJ has done that. Well, he's proven to a lot of people in baseball who thought it was an overdraft when he was drafted by the Cubs in the first round. They didn't know it's this guy. So they wanted him to hit for power because of his size. They got, oh, he's going to be a big, powerful shortstop. And that's not what he is. He's a line drive doubles guy, steals some bases, catch everything at second base. Nothing wrong with any of the above. This is a winning player, championship caliber player. Great when hard work pays off, perseverance, and never doubting yourself. That's DJ LeMayhew. 1 1 outside, 2 and 1. See a guy like Heston spend a lot of time with Tim Hudson. Veteran guy, same kind of stuff, 80, 86 to 91. Last fastball, 87, gonna try to work it under his hands. And that is a fair ball. Duffy will have to go the long way. Good jump by Arenado. So Nolan in scoring position for Paulson with two outs. Paulson with a base hit in his first at bat. Out hit here would be huge because Heston's kind of settled in after giving up the two long balls in the first. Posey blocks that one and up. You know, it's amazing to me. Buster Posey only has one error on the year playing a position like that. One at, at first base. One. But Played a lot of games at first. That is remarkable. Guy played everywhere at Florida State. Played hitter really well. Close games also. 
Every Sunday home game this season is bike to the game, including this Sunday. Get more information at Rockies.com slash green. Two zero on bet. Three and zero. And a four pitch walk to Paulson. And Conley will come up. Looked like a pitch around and he wanted to go right on right. Tweet us your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag RMDataStrongFan. We'll try to get you in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you each night by T Mobile. Hit into a 6 4 3 double play in the second. It's a curveball for a strike. Heston coming in had given up 12 runs in 11 innings at Coors Field. Bottom of four, two nothing Colorado. De La Rosa is allowed just one hit. And that's outside. He's being really careful because even if you were to load the bases, he knows that the pitcher, De La Rosa, is on deck. Not suggesting he wants to load the bases here, but he's not going to throw a cookie to Hundley, who brought a 304 average into the game. A lot of times, too, you do that, you load the bases, you miss with your pitches, and then all of a sudden a pitcher comes up, you get 2 0, and now they're taking. Get a little they out of be, rhythm. They might be taking on an 0 count just to try to get the count there. Three and one on Hundley. Arenado at second, he singled. Paulson at first, he just walked. Tried to hold up, could not. Three and two. A lot of time, three, two count. You see that RBI sitting out there. That's what you got on your mind to try to, to get it. Here's the thought process as a pitcher. If it was good enough, three one with the pitcher in the on deck circle, I'm going to throw it on a three two count. You try to get tricky and go, okay, I'll run a fastball under his hands. A lot of times you get burnt. Three and two. Chris Davis, like Cargo, has had an unbelievable second half. He now has hit 40 home runs. Two outside that'll load him up. De La Rosa. We'll take his turn. See if Jorge can uh, burn Chris Heston. The day after every Rockies victory, get 50% off your online order at Papa John's. The promo code is Rockswin at PapaJohns.com. David Getty on the phone. He's starting to look at the pitch count a little bit. 68 pitches, bases loaded. Last thing they want to do is hit or walk here, not have somebody prepared to come in ball game. It's 
foul ball. Or as Mike Fox, our producer, told me, might have been ordering a Papa John's pizza for after the game. That does happen, by the way. De La Rosa. That's in one and one. See if I'm a little more comfortable out of my windup than my stretch. Nolan's not going to steal home. Pitchers up. Go to my windup with two outs. Two on De La Rosa with the bases full. Base runners every inning, but the third for the Rockies against Heston. Two and two. Strikes out De La Rosa, and the Rockies will leave the bases loaded in the fourth. We'll go to the fifth. Colorado lead 2 0 on the Gonzalez Arenado home run to the first. Brought to you by your hometown Toyota stores. Let's go places. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. In lower downtown Denver, the Rockies up 2 0 with George Frazier and Ryan Spielborgs tonight. I'm Drew Goodman. Buster Posey will be first in the top of the fifth inning. Take a look at our core's timeless moment. We go back to April 29, 2007. This is an unassisted triple play. Tulo just tagging everybody, throwing the ball around. He got like six outs on that play. Chipper Jones. Remember it well. 13 at the time, unassisted triple play in Major League history. Rockies turned to triple play the other day on a First and second situation, runners going. Line drive off the bat of Paul Goldschmidt, right at Jose Reyes. He went to LeMahieu. LeMahieu on first, and that turned the trick. Posey popped out his first time up, and he fouls it off his leg, and he can try to walk it off. Well, that looked like right on the foot.
about this graphic here folks uh, look at all time average highest average. And all the big leagues when they come into Coors Field and play Fred McGriff nearly 400 Jeffrey Hammond. Adrian Beltre, Buster Posey, and Freddie Sanchez. The interesting thing about Jeffrey Hammonds, Hammonds did it while playing for the Rockies. Primarily. He's got that foot guard on. He must have hit, the, obviously, hit some place where the guard doesn't hold him. Number for a season 323, 16, and 80. Posey's got 110 at bats since his last home run. He's sitting on 99 career home runs. And he's a foot out of the way there. One ball, one strike. Posey Bird Crawford here in the fifth. One base runner allowed so far by De La Rosa. The single by Pagan in the fourth. And Buster drives this ball to deep left field, left center field. And it's going to bounce up against the wall. Kind of gingerly jogs the second. That foot's still bothering him. So a leadoff double for Posey. Billy Buster Posey's a good hitter. Yeah, so is Gerald Dempsey Posey. That's uh, or or uh, yeah, Gerald Dempsey Posey. That's who he is. But anyways, we're still doing Fan Friday Toyota Talk hashtag at Fan Friday at Root Sports underscore RM. So Tina Marie sent in a tweet. She had her first job. She was wearing a sandwich board walking between Mile High and McNichols during Broncos game. She was eight years old. Well, here's something interesting. Todd Helton. His very first job was the Food City Chicken. Line drive to Nolan. That almost turned into another double play. Go ahead, Spilly. So Todd Helton was wearing a chicken suit in front of the Food City supermarket for about a week. He said his dad was able to get him the job, and he didn't last longer than a week. So even a great like Todd Helton has walked the streets in a costume before. So don't feel bad. Do you, do you have a picture? Do you have a picture? Well, Spilly, he's out of work right now. You should see if that gig's available. <laughs> he probably would. Yeah, first yeah, in line. Yeah, I don't think so. I've always been curious, like, what is the application process for Todd, you know, going to be the Food City Chicken? Well. Can you flap your arms? We have, an, it, we have a large suit. What size do you wear? <laughs> well, they need a bigger one for help right now. Oh, oh, bigger than a large? <laughs> He's retired. You know, Spilly, I didn't tell you earlier, but I changed out chickens one time for the Campbell Soup Company in high school. $15 an hour. Changed out chickens? Yeah, I did. Changed out chickens. You know, the old one's got to go. and Campbell Soup, the new one's come in. <laughs> <laughs> All night. That's blocked by Hundley. One and one on Crawford. Thank you. Fifteen dollars an hour, for junior in high school. I mean, what the heck? I mean, you know, I think that's a lot of money. Nineteen Spilly, seventy. What, Spilly, what was your first job? First job was a uh, valet driver in Santa Barbara, and I accidentally <laughs> oh, crashed man. like this Mercedes into, <laughs> into a wall. That was my la first and last night. Imagine that. <laughs> I can't imagine you at Santa Barbara driving anybody's car. Well, it didn't last long. But I worked at uh, the Village Tavern in Broomfield 2003. I was actually taking classes to finish my college degree at CU Boulder and uh, got a job as a waiter and probably hands down the worst waiter Village Tavern has ever had. <laughs> you mean they didn't hire you back ever? Oh, they had me back, but it was just more. When you were a player. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I've gone back as a player. I love their fries. They make great French fries. Long out of this, Crawford has struck out again against De La Rosa. Two outs in the fifth inning. It'll bring up Kelby Tomlinson. Four strikeouts now for De La Rosa. All right, we got Melanie Barth. My first job was pushing the iced tea cart at First Cafeteria. No, that doesn't age 
me at all, I, I'm assuming. And I think Furs Cafeteria closed down about a year ago. No, they still got one in Tulsa. Oh, they do? Yeah. Okay, but the ones in Tulsa. Denver, the ones in Denver are gone. Are they? Yeah, the one in Tulsa is still there. The Farm Shopping Center, Spilly. 51st and Sheridan, if you're over there. Okay, I'll go <laughs> get some iced tea from the ice cream yeah, person. They're there. I think this is fun. Figuring out, because I think at times we look at baseball players and we forget that they're humans, that they've done normal stuff. You see them in the big leagues, you assume that they're just driving fancy cars and they were just handed this job and they didn't grind. I mean, we talk about minor leagues, but we're talking guys have had off-season jobs doing some of the hardest jobs that normal people are doing on an everyday grind. And I think it's appreciative when players go through it and they understand it. I mean, Charlie was talking about getting up at 9 a.m. Yeah, that's real life. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it's real life. So as much as people appreciate baseball players, baseball players appreciate people that are getting up every morning to do their normal daily routine. Here's the 2-0, and that's in the air to shallow right, and DJ gets back and makes the catch. Steals a blue single from Kelby Tomlinson. Middle of five, Rockies up 2-0. Two nothing. The Rockies up on a pair of solo home runs in the first frame. Carlos Gonzalez, Nolan Arenado, our century link link to what's next tomorrow night. It'll be Jake Peavy, the former Padre veteran right-hander, will make his 14th start. And Chad Bettis at six and four will go for the Rockies. Top of the Rockies order here in the fifth inning. Charlie Blackman, ground ball to second, and he was caught looking on a pitch on the. Black on the outside corner. Blackman, Reyes, Gonzalez against Heston, who's actually pitched pretty well since the first inning when he gave up the two home runs and then a sharp single by Morneau. Just two hits allowed since then. And he gets a miss hit ground ball here to Tomlinson. Chris Heston. Threw a no hitter against the Mets, which we showed you earlier. The last guy to throw a no hitter and then get sent down a little bit later on in the season was back in 1999 when Jose Jimenez threw a no hitter, and then about a month later, the Cardinals sent him down to AAA. I 
think had, I think if memory serves me right, Jose Jimenez had two extraordinary games back to back. One being a no hitter, and another one was kind of a near no hitter. And then a month later, he's pitching in uh, in Triple A, two and one on Reyes. Heston, by the way, the 22nd rookie to throw a no hitter. Last one to do it was Clay Buckholz in 2007, September 1st, for the Red Sox. Another ground ball. League leaders are brought to you by your Colorado Hyundai dealers. At bats for a home run, National League that's entering tonight. It's going to be a little bit lower for Cargo. He leads the league. Basically, every 13 at bats, he's hit a home run. Nolan hitting one. About every 15 at bats. Amazing when you think that Cargo on June 1st had four home runs. Here he is, two outs. Ran the shortest last time. Six times this year, Cargo has had a game with at least two home runs. The Rockies' record is eight in a season. Got a pitch out over the plate there to his liking. 0 oh 2. Larry Walker, Todd Helton, Andres Galarraga all had eight multi home run games in a single season. Cargo's now joined Helton and Vinny. Vinny did it twice with six multi home run games in a season. Two outs, nobody on. Here's the one, two. Feels straight up after last night. You don't know where to play him. You hit a ball out to left. You hit a ball well, out I to do. right. Tonight, I know where to play. One to right center. I know where to play on the other side of the wall. Right. Yeah. You just buy a ticket and plant them out there. If they catch it over the wall, it's a ground rule though. Lately, you'd have more of a chance. <laughs> and a big foul swing. tip held. So Haston strikes out Cargo. One, two, three, fifth inning. Two nothing Rockies. First inning, it was a loud and thunderous first inning. Cargo hit a ball just foul that they had to review for a home run. It took about three, four minutes. Next pitch, he hit about 450 to right center. And then the next pitch after that, Nolan hit one out to left. And De La Rosa's been outstanding throughout. Justin Morneau has returned. He had an 
hit his first at bat. We go to the sixth inning, and Juan Perez out of the eighth spot in the lineup will lead it off. Let's check in again with Spilly out in center. Spilly? Yeah, that's right. It is Fan Friday, so we are checking out on people's first jobs, and here's another one from Patrick Pratt. His first job was working at Bonnie Bray Ice Cream, where he served me once in 2007. I actually remember that I got chocolate peanut butter crunch with sprinkles and a waffle cone, and if uh, Patrick remembers, I always ask for one green gummy bear. Just one? Always just one. And another guy. I would, that would be a good gig for me. I'd eat all, I, you know, I'd be eating more than I'm selling. It would be a good gig. And you would think baseball players' other good gig would be to work for a sporting good show or <laughs> store. And that was another one that uh, a guy like Brandon Barnes worked for as well. That's not bad. One and two. Worked at Chick Sporting Goods. Uh, I've worked at Dick Sporting Goods. <laughs> was that the same? It was uh, owned by two different people. Dick's took over. <laughs> Realized how bad I wanted to not work a real job and to continue my career in baseball and, and get to that goal of playing in the big leagues. So there you go. I think the moral of the story is try to find the name of a company that sounds similar to a bigger company. Right. So we So we learned that that the motivation to get to the big leagues for Blackman and Barnes was not having to work in the jobs that they uh, had in the offseason. Blackman couldn't get there. It's a bloop single for Juan Perez leading off the six. That'll bring up Chris Heston. One of my first jobs, you like this one. Me and three buddies, three high school teammates, put suits on. We grabbed like pitchfork shovels. We got on a pile of dirt. We had a photo taken and then we had written up top it said a touch of class and then we were bold enough shall I say on the bottom to put 20 years of combined experience and we said yard work painting any sort of you know outdoor yeah. cleaning that right. had to be done and we would and we drove around we stuffed them in mailboxes that's a pretty good bun. And the sacrifice works three unassisted, so Perez to second. And we got a lot of gigs out of it. Sure Some did. of the painting jobs we did, I think, left a little something to be desired. And I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine you're not good with a brush. One time I got trapped on a roof. <laughs> this was on, this was on this was uh, this was on Long Island. I got trapped on a roof because the roof was got so hot and we were moving around we had blankets because we were doing the trim <laughs> and I didn't realize that I had moved too far away and I couldn't get to the blanket and literally you couldn't even touch the roof Dougie he gets on me for going to Oklahoma that was a long <laughs> afternoon I was rather rather suntanned after uh, that day. <laughs> uh, I could see you try to slide around on a blanket on a hot roof that wasn't good Oh boy. Angel Pagan had the Giants first hit solid single left in the fourth. Two and out. Just a second runner to second base in the game for the Giants. Posey had a leadoff double in the fifth but then Bird lined out Crawford struck out and Tomlinson hit a little pop up that was caught by LeMahieu. Yeah, 0 for 3 so far. That is what the San Francisco Giants are with runners in scoring position. This is going to go out of play. Dodgers in the first inning have taken a 1 0 lead on the Padres. Cubs earlier today beat up Arizona 14 to 5. Addison Russell at a couple of home runs. He's got 12 now. Anthony Rizzo hit his 28th for Chicago. Behind in the count 2-1. This is where De La Rosa has a good opportunity to throw that off-speed split. Good fastball rolled it above the hands. Good pitch. Two and two.
Brewfest returns Saturday, September the 5th. Purchase the Brewfest ticket package to enjoy beers from all the 15 regional breweries. Vote for your favorite because that brewery is going to win a tap space in April of 2016. It's against the Giants tomorrow here at the ballpark. Rooftops full tonight, as it is all, uh, almost every night. Two two and Pagan with a base hit to center Blackman coming. He's not going to have any play and Perez scores and now it's a one run game. Broken bat single for Perez it's for Pagan scores Perez is 28th RBI. For Angel two to one. Making good pitches too. That's the thing about it Perez gets on with a blooper into center field they sacrifice him to second. And he's able to fight off this pitch away from him, Pagan, and dump it into the outfield in front of Charlie Blackman. Not hit hard at all, but hard enough to score Perez in his 28th RBI. I'll bring up Matt Duffy. Just 74 pitches in this game for De La Rosa. Managed the strike zone very well. De La Rosa wanted to check on that punt if he's kept the bat out as he tried to get away. Curl Danley said, No, sir. Matt Duffy went to Long Beach State. He had 501 at bats in college. You know how many home runs he hit? None. Zippo. This year, he's hit 10 in the big leagues. Got a little stronger. Saw better pitching. And two. 18th round pick in 2012. They have an awful lot of 8th, 12th, 10th, 15th round picks that get up to the big leagues with, with their organization. Well, look at their infield. We talk about homegrown. Brandon Crawford's homegrown. Duffy obviously is homegrown. Panic is homegrown. He'll be back on Monday. Belt. Belt is homegrown. Posey. Posey's homegrown. Not bad. You know, Duffy wasn't around for for the other uh, World Series, but neither was Panic other than last year. But those are. That's how even the big market teams ultimately have to get it done. You have to have players from your own system emerge and have an impact. Bumgarner, homegrown. Kane, Lincecum. One, two. He's batted third 41 games this year. This is his 31st game batting the two spot. Check on Pagan. Been a light mist falling here at the ballpark for the past two and a half innings. Start that will affect the outfield play and the infield, obviously, on the ground ball. Line drive to right. This one is foul. If you're on the road traveling and you don't want to watch the Rockies, subscribe to MLB.tv Premium for live or 
on demand on over 400 devices, real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking, and more. MLB.tv. side of the infield. They just been on the in the air and not been able to do it. Fans down there like it. Getting a few extras. Broke his glasses, saved his beer, got a foul ball. Perfect. Going that way. Pagan stops at second and now the tying run in scoring position. And Brandon Belt coming up. Behind him is Buster Posey. There's one out. Belt, a strikeout, and a ground ball to short. Steve Foster making a soft jog out to the mound. Just got to have a little breather and talk. Oberg has started to move around a little bit. The phone has not rung down in the bullpen yet, but you kind of know when you're going to get that call or the role you might be in. So that's when you start stretching and moving and make sure you get things going. Brooks Brown. Jermin, the right-hander, has started to throw down in the Rockies' bullpen. Two strikes off Bell. Strikes him out. Two outs. That is large. A letter more effort into the fastball. 92. He's been throwing fastballs in the 89 91 range. You can see one got a little extra, but it was the location of the pitch more than it was the velocity. Outside corner, paint black, swung right through it. Not out of the woods yet. Buster Posey, one for two, a booming double last inning. Pagan, the tying run is at second. The go ahead run at first at Matt Duffy. Two one Colorado. With the sixth inning. Posey's hit nine of his last ten. Buster with that double. For his last five games, he was 12 for 22 coming in, but all 12 hits were singles. The double snapped that stretch. That's a strike one and one. Well, it didn't start out like it was going to be a one-run game, especially no. a low-scoring one-run game in the sixth. Rockies in the first, third batter Cargo hit one a mile. Against Chris Heston, and then Nolan Arenado did the same thing a moment later. So Posey gets hit. Ball cut way inside, and now the bases are loaded for Marlon Bird. Marlon 
Bird is 0 for 2 and 0 for his last 16. Grounded to third and lined to third. Swung on and missed. It's 0 and 1. Birds had two chances this year at the bases loaded. The results were good. Two for two, six RBIs. Let's hope it doesn't happen here. Let's make the out. He's got eight grand slams in his career. Oh, and two. Fell right out of it at 82 miles an hour. That split finger. See the tumbling action on the pitch. Bird right over the top of it. Bases full of Giants. Two outs. Rockies up two to one. Two strike count on the veteran Marlon Bird. How did he hit that? Well, he barely hit it. Well, look where it was. I mean, it was all the way back in there. Dan Russell's gone to it for three straight pitches, and uh, here on the third, when you can see it on the Subaru Super Bowl, the split, the tumbling, Bird able to just slightly make contact with him. Oh, 2 again, swung out and missed. He got him with a 93 mile an hour fastball, the hardest pitch he's thrown tonight. And De La Rosa works out of a bases loaded situation. The Giants do get a run. It's two to one going to the bottom of the sixth. Lexus look back on our number one volume Lexus dealer cargo just missed a home run in his previous swing towering fly ball over the right field foul pole they reviewed it said it was fouled. So that's all right I'll hit this one to right center and then Nolan came right behind him with a home run and there was uh, jubilation in the dugout this was last inning Pagan with a broken bat single Perez scores the only run for the Giants. It's two to one. Chris Heston and Nolan Arenado here in the sixth inning. That's inside. Nolan, the home run, and then a sharp single to center in the fourth. Heston has done a great job since that first inning, allowing just a couple of hits and a couple of walks. Well, he's done a nice job when he's fell to this count. On two row counts, he's been able to make a pitch to get the ball on the ground and to get the out or work his way back into it. Fly ball out. He stayed out of the middle of the plate pretty well.
This ball line to left to base hit. Nolan's three for three. And here comes Justin Morneau playing his first game since May the 14th. Actually, May the 13th was his last game. And Justin in the clubhouse today talked about the importance of not ignoring any sort of head injury. We've come a long way with that, especially uh, in the last 10 years in, in all of sports. And, you know, if we can do it at this level, I think it's also important for, for people to see that for kids and, and, you know, kids in high school, you know, uh, going through that, going through those things that, uh, you know, there is stuff more important than, than that day and that day's game. And, and it's, uh, you know, living a long and healthy life. And, and uh, if we can set that example through sports that, uh, you know, as tough as it is to not play, it's, sometimes it's for the better. Well put by Morneau earlier today. It's 1 0 on Justin. Playing in his 1466th career game. Lifetime 281 hitter, 241 home runs, 954 RBIs. He'd like to make it about 955 right now. And this one is going to be handled by Tomlinson. But for a full minute, may have enough. To get into center field. One out, that'll bring up DJ LeMay, who's 0 for 2. Let's go to center field again, check in on Spilly. All right, as you know, we're doing Fan Friday tonight. We're talking about jobs that we have had, and some people that I work with, a Jenny Kavanaugh, wanted to show me her job. Jenny worked at Outback Steakhouse. Corey Sullivan was a gym manager at the YMCA. Big Jason Hirsch was a techie at Best Buy. That was probably great. And our producer, Brayden, were construction. Is there interesting? Yeah, there's some interesting Motley Crue. Actually, you know what? Characters right there that probably couldn't do much more than what they're doing right now. Billy, I got to call Hirsch up because I'm going to Best Buy tomorrow to get a television, and he can reach the ones on the t you know up high. That, that's yeah, that's yeah. probably what he was good for. All right. He's Excuse like, hey, me. grab that thing up there, Mr. Lurch guy. <laughs> 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 I, I can just imagine Jenny at Outback. He's like, I'm not going to get that for you. I have other things to do. And Corey is probably a gym guy. Yeah, that's he's, he's, never, seen, he's never seen Corey, a gym in his whole life. Corey should be w working with Hirsch as a techie, don't you think? Yeah, he's never seen a gym in his whole life. I mean, we used to joke that his chest is concave. So was he not? Was he the worst eater of any teammate you played with? Hands down, the worst eater I've ever played with. How would have a large pizza, pepperoni pizza, every single night? Yep. They love it. Catches up to you 30 plus, doesn't it? Yeah, you can tell. I mean, if he's wearing these like tight polo shirts, it's not a good sight. You mean the ones he bought when he was in high school? Was the, he a what? The Speediums. Oh, yeah. Slowly Speedy. hit to short. And DJ beat the return throw, so there's two outs. And that'll bring up Paulson. It's a little surprising that it was even this close. I mean, what the youngster's got a pretty good arm. You got a close play, it's amazing. It's like nine coaches run to the phone, they're waiting, Bochy's looking back, all the teams do it. You got another one, Spilly? Tracy Ringlesby was an intern for Frontier Taxidermist. Really? That doesn't surprise me one bit. I actually what does an intern do at the taxidermist? <laughs> intern. Is it an intern or in? I don't know. Some of this country stuff, I don't. I have no idea what people from Wyoming do. You should go there. I mean, I know Jeff Houston tonight is getting the Hall of Fame award. So, yes, congrats. And I think that was because he played baseball at a very high level. He had some records at the University of Wyoming. But other than that, I, I'm not into taxidermy. I'm from California. I, I go to the beach. I serve. If I see a dead thing, I run the other way. <laughs> <laughs> and look at this. This is uh, from this evening. Good work, Huey. Absolutely. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jeff. Well deserved. Going into the Wyoming Hall of Fame. Tonight, the banquet. Football game tomorrow. Base hit center field. Paulson. And DJ's gonna head to third. 
you know, similar Smith's situation. Been on three times tonight. Similar situation in the ball game. First and third now. And Nick Cunley a chance to do some damage. They may see how Boach plays this. Well, he's marching out to the mound. Strickland's in the mound, the bullpen warming up. Tell you what, Hester uh, came back, straightened things up pretty good here in this ball game. Pitched well. Yeah, it didn't look like he was going to get out of the first inning for a minute there. So Heston walks off. By the Ford Super Duty, built better, built stronger, built Ford Tough by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com and by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Well, Hunter Strickland can bring it. 43rd game for him to appear in a 194 on run average, 41 and two thirds innings, 44 strikeouts with just eight walks. Fastball 94 97 touching 99 occasionally good hard slider to go along with it. Bochy trying to get a strikeout now and then, uh, squash anything the Rockies got going on and keep it a 2 1 ball game. And Conley swings at the first pitch. And fouls it back. Stretch at 99. Strickland burst onto the scene a year ago. With a call up in late August. At the very end of the season it started the year in double A and it moved quickly. Through their system and then uh, has bounced a couple of times this year between big leagues and triple A, but you can see he's been in the big leagues for the majority of the time, 43rd appearance. 0 oh, and 1. First and third. Paulson goes back to first. LeMay, who's at third. Rockies up 2 1 here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Rosario's on deck if Nick Huntley reaches. Ball at 99. You remember in the World Series, Perez hit the home run off of him, and a jawing session started right after that. Bench is empty. That fastball was at 99. It left the park in Kansas City. O2. Three pitches all 99 miles an hour. Well, I'll tell you how successful he's been with inherited runners. Then when he come into the ball game, he's come in with 20 on base. One has scored all year. 95% success rate. That's pretty good. High. Last 
20 at bats against him with runners in scoring position. The opposition's 0 for 20. Huntley's trying to break that up. Here's Willian. Able to strike out Nick Huntley with runners on the corner. So it remains two to one as we go to the seventh. For Toyota Talk, we got a couple more. We got Lance. He first job was installing underground sprinkler system for a guy that paid him in Broncos tickets for the preseason, which I think is pretty cool. And as my monitor just blew out, oh, here's another one. All right, this one's from Cheesy Pal. First job, he made a dollar ten an hour at a dry cleaners, and on his first day, found eight hundred dollars in the pants of somebody that worked for the first cafeteria. He thinks it was the manager's receipts. Hopefully, he gave the money back. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, That's, he didn't tweet that, did he? Yeah, that, where's that tweet? It's right here. <laughs> no, that he, he gave it uh, back. Uh, yeah, where's the, he didn't the give it back. It's 145 words. I mean, he could have said I gave it back, but it was in the next tweet. All right, good luck One for at it. time. All right. Brandon Barnes is in left field now for the Rockies. Ben Paulson comes out. De La Rosa to face Brandon Crawford. He has struck him out twice. Top of 7-2-1 Colorado. They've had hit the Giants 7-5. Christian Friedrich and Mikel Castro are down warming up in the bullpen for the Rockies. Crawford has not looked comfortable at all against De La Rosa. And here's the one strike delivery. Here's the 0-2. One and two. Oh. 
Crawford just two for his last 25 and the one two couldn't get him to chase there. Two That's two. Hardest thing a lot of people say you know timings off adjust to the fastball. I think it'd be harder on a hitter adjusting to the off speed pitch because you're geared to hit the fastball. He's been out for four or five games. He's pinch hit once or twice, but he had played every day. You know, Della Rosa's got that good split finger he can go to. 2 2. Kelby Tomlinson, Juan Perez. The next two hitters. Pitch the 98th of the night for De La Rosa. Been a good ball game for Jorge. He's got him again. Third time tonight. He has struck out Crawford. That is strikeout number seven for De La Rosa. 82 mile an hour split finger from De La Rosa. What he had done in the past, he got ahead of Martin Bird previously to end it with the bases loaded. 93 mile an hour heater. He goes to the split finger here at 82. See, so come right out of the end. The tumbling action, the hard pull with the middle finger created a slider type break on the baseball. Kelby Tomlinson has twice hit the ball in the air to DJ LeMayhu. Chris Heston ends up going five and two thirds, couple runs, seven hits, two walks, four strikeouts. Giants have Josh Osich up in their bullpen. And this is going to drop in front of Charlie Blackman. So Tomlinson, a one out single, and that'll bring up Juan Perez. Let's take a look at our data strong fan photo brought to you by T-Mobile. There you go. Enjoying the ball game with dad. Good stuff. Perez singled his last time up and scored the only run for the Giants. Giants have a fleet of left-handed bats on their bench including the switch hitting catcher Hector Sanchez and that's who has a bat right now Owen one on Perez the ground ball the second can the Rockies turn it here's one play nicely done DJ LeMahieu to Jose Reyes and the Rockies safely navigate the top of the seventh they continue to lead two to one this was a good turn looks like Bochi wants this one reviewed they're gonna lose it Clearly out. Yeah, he's out by about a good half step. Great turn by the Rockies. 2 1, stretch time at Coors Field.
going to pinch hit for Jorge De La Rosa. Hip hip Jorge. Good outing again for De La Rosa. And he's in position to win his ninth ball game with the Rockies ahead by a run. Hunter Strickland remains on the mound and Adamas bounces this one to second. And the good strong throw by Tomlinson will get Adamas one out. Yeah, De La Rosa seven innings, six hits. He didn't walk batter, seven strikeouts by Jorge. Charlie Blackman, 0 for 3, and he's not going to face Strickland. Here comes Boach. Double switch. Gregor Blanco is going to come in. We'll tell you all the particulars when we return. One out in the bottom of the seventh. The Rockies ahead by a run. Doing our fan Friday today, and we were talking about jobs. And a job that never ever stops is the job of being a parent. And so, of course, we're going to talk about George Frazier's daughter, Georgia Frazier. This is the moment that changed her life forever, being crowned Miss Oklahoma. We are going to miss George this weekend as he goes to support his daughter that is going to be competing for Miss America. We wish you the best, George, Thanks, and Billy. George as well. Thank you, and I will pass that along to her. I'm really looking forward to it. It's just icing on the cake now. I mean, being Miss Oklahoma, to be able to one of the 52 contestants, uh, Kay and I are looking forward, leaving Sunday morning. The rest of the family is all going to be in there on Friday. So we'll just see. I'm going to be pretty nervous. I, I can't imagine how nervous you're going to be. I'm going to a non-smoking facility, Spilly. How am I going to do? Did they, don't they make, like, uh, <laughs> stickers and stuff <laughs> yeah. to put on your Holy arms cow. and stuff? I'm going to be so nervous. Hey, it's crazy. Listen, we're going to be nervous for you. Yeah, there you we, go. We've already got it recorded. So There you uh, go. Yeah, it's going to be I know, nuts. You know, listen, I know George is going to do great. Well. And we're all really proud of thank her. Thank you. And, thank you. And we really need some DNA sampling to prove that she's your daughter. <laughs> yeah, but there that's, you go. that's a subject that's right. for a different day. There you go. That's right. Josh Osich is in. One out. And a one and one count on Charlie Blackman. Rockies would love some insurance here as they work at the bottom of the seventh inning. So De La Rosa's seven strong innings. A run on six hits. No walks. Seven strikeouts. He did hit a batter. Osich got a huge power slider. Fastball in the mid 90s. Another one of those guys they find. Shows up in the big leagues. You know, with that felt being hurt, you know, this soft fly ball to the left, but Blanco just came into the ball game. But with that felt hurt on the DL, they needed that other left hander to compliment Lopez. This guy's done a nice job. Six, 16 in the third, 17 strikeouts. Two outs. Jose Reyes trying to reach for cargo. This is popped 
up and it's going to go out of play. So De La Rosa gives the Rockies seven terrific innings tonight after Chris Russell throws another complete game yesterday. That's 16 strong innings for the starters. A little bit more on what uh, Russell did last night. Six hits, three runs. Two of them came on the one hanging slider that uh, was hit out of the ballpark by Ryan Vogelsong. First Rocky since 2011 to throw two complete games in the same season. Ubaldo and Jolice did it that year. 0 and 2. And the first guy to do it at Coors Field the same season since 08 when Aaron Cook turned the trick. So good for Chris. And you know, Jorge fashioned a, an ERA below three in August. And he's rolling that kind of work into September. Yes, he is. And, uh, you know, Jorge, good to see him back. He was eight and four after that tough start. Now all of a sudden he's eight and four, chance to be nine and four. He just wins, man. He just wins. And he's had good numbers throughout his career against the uh, Giants. Trying to improve to 10 and six lifetime against San Francisco. One and two on Reyes. Fastball right on the black at 96. Jose did well to waste that one. Crowd of 29,196 in the house this evening to welcome in the weekend. Giants playing scoreboard watching throughout the season now, the rest of the way. And the Dodgers are 2 2 at the Padres in the third at Petco. Brandon Bell will make the catch and the Rockies done in the seven. So we turn the page to inning number eight. Colorado two, San Francisco one. A couple of innings. Jairo Diaz is going to take over on the mound, and there's been a lot of cross outs. Other type of uh, notations made on the lineup card on both sides. Diaz, the guy the Rockies acquired from the Angels in the offseason for Josh Rutledge. He has spent most of the year in AAA. One of those power late inning arms the Rockies hope will be part of their future. Yeah, see what he does here. He's going to catch Blanco as the leadoff man. When on the double switch, you got a left on left, or excuse me, a left-handed hitter going against a right-handed hard-throwing reliever out of the Rockies bullpen. Christian Friedrich's back up throwing again. He was ready also along with Diaz. And John Axford has started to get loose. I, excuse me, Justin Miller has started to get loose. I was looking way out there and saw beards. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Four hitters down, Brandon Bell. And the first pitch is in there for a strike on Gregor Blanco. Just stepped into the ball game in the double switch.
popped up. This may be playable for Huntley, and then again, maybe not. Two strike count on Blanco. Diaz ready. He rears back and throws a 99 mile an hour heater, a little high, ball one. Throw that slider around 90. This is line center field, caught. By Blackman, one out. Angel Pagan will flip around to the uh, left side. He hits better from the right side. Pagan hitting 306 righty, just 239 lefty this year. Who wants tacos? Fans follow at Root Sports underscore RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special when the Rockies score seven or more in any ball game. We always say, hopefully, you took advantage of that today. Pagan takes ball one. Bochi before the ball game talking to the media saying we just have to get hot. We just need a hot streak and See what happens Remaining positive despite the sweep in LA that has seen them Now looking at a six and a half game deficit to the Dodgers They're tied 2-2 now that ball game in the third inning. They jumped on top of San Diego 2-0 Washington a winner over Atlanta 5-2. Mets a loser to Miami. 6-5. Two ones outside, three and one on Pagan. I mean, the it's Giants really right now are in the midst of playing 22 straight against sub-500 teams. They only have four games left against a team above 500. That's the final week of the season when they play the Dodgers. Well, the Cubs got a seven-game lead in the wild card right now. And they won again today. And the Pirates were away. Left field, Barnes out there, and Brandon will make the catch. Two outs. And that'll bring up Matt Duffy. Yeah, that Matt Duffy, George, was the uh, PCL, just named uh, in the last 24 hours, named the PCL Player of the Year. I did not know that. The other Matt Duffy, he right. is known to his teammates, the real Matt Duffy. <laughs> he's a top prospect for the Houston Astros, and he's a third baseman also. How about the Houston Astros minor league system? They're like 160 games above 500. Jeff Lewinow has stacked that thing up over there with draft picks, trades. It'll be pretty good for a while. This Triple Matt Duffy's one for three. Triple-A ball club. There's one their division. The double-A ball club won the first half. And Trevor Story, after a slow start when he got moved from New Britain to Albuquerque, has been terrific. It's a lot like going to, of months. It's a lot like going to the big leagues. All of a sudden you're flying everywhere, nicer hotels, you're staying in Hyatt's, you're not staying in the others. And, and the really nice hotels, and it's kind of an adjustment period. You face a lot of big league guys that you haven't seen or been around. You're 23 years old, and the average age in the locker room is 29. You're the little kid in school. C1 
see what Walt does. Duffy with a two out single. You have the dangerous Brandon Belt representing the go ahead run coming up from the left side. Friedrich has been throwing. He's got to be ready. And here comes Walt. So two outs, one on in the eighth. And it'll be. Boone Logan. So Boone Logan had gotten up and replaced Friedrich. So Boone will come in to face Brandon Belt when we come back. Rockies two, Giants one. to their seventh straight loss. Brandon Belt getting ready to hit with Matt Duffy at first base and Boone Logan's assignment get Brandon Belt out. One for four against Boone Logan. Logan making his 51st appearance 0-2 record. 31 innings, 39 strikeouts. He'll try to do the same here with a couple of outs and a runner at first. Most of his appearance of late coming off the DL have been in this role to get one hitter, get a key left-handed bat. Yeah, 51 appearances, 30 plus innings. Belt tonight 0 for 3, a couple of strikeouts. Way inside. Posey on deck. You don't want to see him till the ninth inning. Justin Miller remains up in the Rockies pen. There goes Duffy and it's fouled off. Giants and that is caught by LeMahieu. That thing started to tail back the other way. DJ stayed with it. That ends the eighth. Logan gets his man. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Two to one, Colorado.
Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your look for it now at southwest.com. Rockies up two to one in Lodo. And stepping up to the plate is Carlos Gonzalez. He got the Rockies on the board very quickly in the first inning with a home run to right center. Nolan Arenado followed that up with a home run to left center. That's all the offense for the Rockies tonight. Osich's first pitch swung on and missed. How hot has Cargo been? Well, this was coming into today. Players that have hit 25 or more home runs at a 50 game stretch. Cargo with 26. Ryan Howard, Pujols in 06. Bonds in 01 hit 31. Sosa 27. That's how unbelievable this stretch has been for number five. Twenty six home runs in his last 50 ball games. Crazy stuff. O two. in the bullpen one of them I'm sure will face Arenado who strikes on cargo against Osage and that ball just fouled. Hits her even at seven. Three straight multi home run games. Cargo's sitting on two right now. Jeff Devan in 03, Lee May 69, Frank Thomas 62, Gus Reneal in 51. And Osich strikes out Cargo. Here comes Boach. He's going to go to a right hander, obviously, with Arenado coming up or Jimmy John's delivery of the game. It was the home runs in the first. Cargo to right center. And then his buddy Nolan Arenado on the next swing. It will be Sergio Romo spent some of his college days on the Western Slope at what is now Colorado Mesa University. Back then it was known as Mesa State. Romo against Arenado when we come back. Two to one Colorado in the eighth.
So here's Nolan with one out in the eighth inning to face Sergio Robo. Rockies leading by a run. Giants run came in the sixth inning. Mr. Slider. Yep, very good slider. Throws it from a lot of angles. Arenado's three for nine against him in his career with a home run. 56 game for him to appear in. A very good earned run average of 320. He saved, saved the Giants in a couple of those World Series, closing them out against the Detroit Tigers. We got a pitch to hit. Towering fly ball near the line of the wall. Two sliders in a row, he's home. Since the start of 2014, he has pitched in eight games at Coors Field. Sergio Romo has. Five and two-thirds innings, 12 hits, seven earned runs, an 11-12 earned run average, and the Rockies have hit 444 against. Nolan tonight, a perfect evening. Three for three. Home run, single, single. on deck. Axford warming in the Rockies pen. And he gets him to pop up Brandon Belt territory. Planning an event, don't strike out, get Dinger. That's right, send an email to Dinger at Rockies.com or call 303-312-2266. For more information about having Dinger, the Rockies mascot, show up at your next special event. He was out running loose the other day. So I'm at a corporate event. Morneau, a single in the first in his first game since May the 13th. Fly ball to left and a flare to second and this ball is going to be tracked down by Blanco and his good speed so Gregor Blanco runs it down we'll go to the ninth inning Rockies looking for three more outs up two to one in the first back-to-back -back home runs for Cargo and Nolan Arenado. We head to the top of the ninth. That means that the Toyota Post Game Show is coming up right after. I'm going to say ride the pony, the little pony. you got to ride him to the finish line because he might be the home run leader. Anything you can do, Nolan can do better. Cargo can do anything better than Nolan? No, he can't. Yes, he can. No, he can't. 
Okay, they both are pretty good. <laughs> Don't forget the pitchers either. Last night, Chris Russin goes complete game tonight. De La Rosa, seven strong innings, one run. Very nice. All right, let's finish things off, and we'll see you right after the baseball game, guys. Oh, I thought you guys were to continue the argument. I was entertained. We could sing it if you'd like, but then Hershey, 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 everyone for, would have to hit mute. Anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> I think they stole <laughs> that line from us last it. night, Drew. That's all right. Uh, actually, Jason could sing. We can't. Right. John Ashford, Ashford uh, is going to get Buster Posey, Marlon Bird, Brandon Crawford, three tough guys. And Posey's 0 for 3 in his career against him. Marlon Bird in his career is uh, 3 for 5 against him. A couple of tough numbers coming up, making his 49th appearance. He has 18 saves and 23 opportunities. Looking for 19. This is more of a game we typically see Frazier at AT&T Park two to one in the ninth. Not unfortunately, field. unfortunately, both you've seen a lot of these so in the last seven, eight ball games. Yesterday, the Rockies blew him out. It wasn't that uh, the case in St. Louis or in L.A. But here you go again. It's a one-run ball game. Those last three outs are never easy. Now the Giants have lost nine of their last ten one-run games. How about that? Rockies trying to make it 10 of their last 11. So here we go. Posey against John Axford. And the first pitch, a slider. This is ball one. Interesting conversation with John Axford yesterday in the Denver Post when he made the comment it's great to throw 97 or 98, but if you don't locate it and you don't have secondary pitches, major league hitters will hurt you. He's got a very good curveball, very good slider. He'll go along with that 97 mile an hour pass, but that's a really nice play by Justin Morneau. So despite being out for a while, his uh, grace at first base was not affected. One out. You know, not to, to make this thing look simple because it wasn't. Second hop always gains speed, gains rotation on the ball, and he was able to field that. Good job, too, by John Axford. Ball hit to the right side. Uh, get over, get there, and beat the runner. And he did that by quite a margin. That's a big first down. Posey, former National League MVP, back to the dugout. Marlon Bird, 0 for his last 17 at the plate. But a dangerous guy. He's hit 22 home runs this year. That heater down below his knees. It's 0 and 1. Holds his hands a little bit like Bobby Bonds. Not Barry, but Bobby. Straight out in front of him. Has a recoil action to get it back and set. Actually, threw a fastball by him again at 97. Two on Bird. We want the fastball up. And Bird held up one and two. That George, and we talk about waste pitches sometimes being ridiculous. That was a really good 0-2 pitch. Anything you get from the belt buckle to the chest is pretty good when it's 97. You get to buy a lot of people up there. One two. Slowly hit, tough play for Nolan, and safe at first, according to Kerwin Danley. Well, you got to respect the power of Marlon Bird, and particularly with two strikes, you got to sit back and wait. Walt is Walt's waiting to see if there's going to be a, a second look at this. Nolan able to field it cleanly, then throw the perfect strike, and it looks like he does beat it. Let's see if Walt, Jim Joyce waits patiently before he makes his decision. Yep, once Walt says, let's look at it. And why not? That can't hurt. There's no reason not to look at it.
I don't know if there's a play, honestly, that Nolan doesn't handle exceptionally well and better than anybody in the game. But those slow rollers that he picks with his bare hand, I mean, it's just ridiculous. I haven't seen a bobble one yet. Time for a Subaru review. Whether you're on the road or at the game, everybody could use a second set of eyes. Yeah, he is on the bag. Yeah, he is. Didn't take long. But it's worth the check. Ninth inning, one out, one run game. Why not? So Bird, the tying run at first with one out. And Brandon Crawford, who's had a rough night, but that was against the lefty De La Rosa. 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. Now he's facing the righty Axford in the ninth. He could make a case with Troy Tulowitzki now in Toronto in the American League. And Ian Desmond having more or less a down year by his standards offensively. But the premier offensive shortstop in the National League is now this man. Defensively pretty special too. I know he's made some errors this year. 12 on the season. It's not a lot as much as they handle it. No, he he got to the big leagues talking to Hensley Mullins, Bam Bam Mullins, the hitting coach for the Giants. He got to the big leagues from a ball because of his glove and his bat wasn't ready. So he's had to learn that craft at the big league level. He's become a very good offensive player now. 19 home runs, 75 ribbies. One to know the count. Two to one Colorado with one out in the ninth. Bird conservative lead. Time called by Nick Cunliffe. Here's the one out. And Bird thought about moving up on the dirt ball and then hustled back. Now, fastball's going to skip off the home plate area right out in front, tries to backhand pick it Went right underneath the pad and caught Nick right on the shoulder. Sometimes luck's pretty good. That time you feel lucky. Bird is a younger player, had a lot of speed. That's not the case anymore, although he can still run a little bit. But he is not the speed demon he once was. He's more of a power player now. Two and one on Crawford. Sharp hit ball. There's one on the first double play ball game over. Nolan in the hole. Started a 5 6 3 double play. And the Rockies have sent the Giants to their seventh straight loss, a 2 to 1 final. Cargo's home run and Arenado's home run in the first stand up behind great work from Jorge De La Rosa. And then Jairo Diaz, Boone Logan, and John Axford. Boy, the Rockies playing good baseball. They've won three straight. Say good baseball, say good starting pitching. Back to back nights, the two lefties did a job. That's why you won these games. No question. Chris Russell last night, Jorge De La Rosa tonight. De La's now 9 and 6. Has to pitch well, takes the loss. He's 11 and 9. Axford is 19. Save. Let's go to center field. Jenny and the gang. All right, thanks so much, Drew. Talk about a team 